when I asked them what's the secret sauce behind it after they went from the one technology to this one, I was like, whoa. It was so, so simple. Mm -hmm. It was so like mm -hmm. dead on. Tony Fidel knows all about technology breakthroughs. He helped create the iPod and the iPhone, and he founded the smart home device maker, Nest. Now Fidel has turned his focus and his investment dollars to a startup called Rohini. The company, he says, is reinventing light. Considering how much we're glued to screens all day, smartphones, laptops, TVs, and even dashboards, a lighting innovation would be a very big deal. That's why a number of major tech players are so intrigued in this startup from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. I had been doing LCDs and displays since 1990, 1989. We've always had problems with backlighting, always trying to make backlight thinner, higher power, and I've seen all the different technologies. And then what they were showing, what Rohini was showing, was like, look, we can make it incredibly bright and we can make it incredibly thin. There were not trade-offs. Typically, lighting represents a design obstacle. It makes objects thicker. But Rohini produces micro LEDs, or microscopic light emitting diodes, that are as thin as a piece of paper. The hardware hasn't caught up with the, the standards yet. Most TVs on the market, they'll hover, you know, 600, 800 nits, and some TVs are getting into the 1,000 nits, which is a big deal. But, um, but we enable TVs up to, say, 10,000 nits, so wow. 10 times brighter. And it's hard to, to relay what that really means to a, to a viewer until you actually see it. A super thin light that's also 10 times brighter means your TV or phone or any screen really could display colors so bright and so uniform that they look more realistic. I think it's not just TVs. We have to remember that there's a problem with displays in general in bright sunlight or bright light. You can't actually read it. One of the other big benefits is power consumption. So for keyboards, um, compared to what they use in the industry today, we're 96% less in power. Did you catch that? Peterson's saying that Rohini can produce the same amount of light using just 4% as much power. So its micro LEDs can make devices last a lot longer. What is the bigger deal? The one that gets people's attention. Is it power consumption, brightness, or I mean, thinness? It's like Tony said, it's wins across the board. How do you, what does that mean to you? How do you translate well, to, that? To me, it's, you know, it's doing things that we've thought of for years, and it's finally making the impossible possible. So for us, it's like it's, you know, it, it opens up a whole set of design ideas. Before Rohini, Peterson specialized in computer keyboards, so he brought an entirely new perspective to lighting. He's already done his first big deal, signing a joint venture this year with a major keyboard supplier. One of the things with Rohini is we have a culture of always trying to make things simpler. When you can make things simpler, usually you're improving it. So we, we looked at the whole lighting industry on how LEDs are made and realize that 90% of the processes and the steps during that process only add thickness and cost. Give me a couple of examples of challenges that you gave him that you really thought this is kind of, I mean, they've got a nice idea, but this is one that's really going to kind of break it. Well, I think the first transition was from this kind of printing of light to placement of light. Then the next challenge was, I don't believe your business model. Was Which like, was what at that stage? Because it sounds like it was like an R&D lab at that point. You're just trying to literally yeah. prove out the technology. Yeah. I mean, one of the cool things about Tony is he's really quick about being able to narrow in on what's important. All these companies have been trying to figure out a way to do this for 10, 20 years. So this has been an industry that continues to evolve and, and try to revolutionize itself. So they've looked at all kinds of different paths and spent many, many millions, hundreds of millions of dollars trying to do what they've this done, idea, right. right? But they've been looking at it in a traditional way of how to, they totally broke the mold. If you can see the future, you can make the future. And all this stuff around us was all made by humans. Envisioning what the future is and then creating it and having the, the guts to just say, we believe in this.